Hello and welcome to this Prominence Developer Chat. My name is Mike Morrison and today I am joined by none other than Tom Griffith. Which would be me. <laughs> and we're here in the studio together and for once we're not doing a developer chat with headsets and Skype. We're actually here in person together sitting side by side hanging out in the studio like real people. Unbelievable. <laughs> How did we first meet? Wow. Yeah. Well, let's see. We've been working together, what, over 10 years, something like that, doing projects, I think? Uh, yes. That would be, what, we'd start in 98? Yeah, something like that. So, wow. Wow. <laughs> That's a long time. That's closer to 20 than it is yeah, to 10. Yeah, than it is to 10. Wow. Um, yeah, we met, I think uh, you met my wife, Martha Trachtenberg, right? Um, singer, songwriter. That's right. I heard her sing, and I was blown away. And at the time, I was running a website where, where I did interviews with musicians and songwriters. Right, right. And I knew I had to meet Martha and talk to her and learn more about her writing. And then that's how I found out about you. And then um, I needed to record some songs. Um, and then I called you up and said, you know, I'd like to come down to your studio and work. Uh, and that was, like you said, about 18 years ago. <laughs> so... Um, where is the time gone? Oh my God. Half of it went to prominence from the looks of yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so that's how we met. And uh, we did my album together and a bunch of other projects. And then you came to me one day. I remember we met over at a Starbucks and you said, Tom. Yeah. I said, Tom, I've got this idea. How would you feel about coming and working on a computer game? And um, I said, sure. <laughs> I didn't know anything about it, but I figured, why not? <laughs> You had no idea what you were I getting had into. I no idea what I was getting into. <laughs> but it's been a fun ride. It has been. It, has it been. really has. I remember that I think that one of the first things we did was we sat down, we figured out, okay, so you had the story set up and you said to me, so we need to develop sort of like a musical language. Would it be sort of like organic instruments? Would it be mechanical? You know, how much sort of metal, not like heavy metal, but like you know, metallic instruments. Um, so we talked a lot about their culture and, uh, and what they might, might be like. And it was cool because at the time I had an idea. I wanted to write something um, like music from an imaginary country. Hmm, I know? remember that, yeah. yeah. And so this was sort of a, even bigger, music from an imaginary world. <laughs> an imaginary planet, right? Yeah, so. yeah I remember that we, we, we actually struggled for a while where we had these environments that represented the game and then we had this cultural picture in our minds of who the Latari people were. The tough job that we had was to marry the idea of their culture but make it work within the environments and to tell the story and to capture the mood of the story. Right. So right. at the time it was really disparate elements that we were trying to bring together. Yeah, yeah. Um, we we had to we had to tell the story and, and also and not for it to be intrusive and um, so we developed the theme, right? Yes, we did, and uh, and we picked some uh, sort of instrumentation that we thought would work well. Um, you know, we bounce back and forth. That's I'd, right. I'd uh, you know we talk about it. I'd go home and and do some stuff, send it down to you. You would tweak it, you send it back to me, back and forth. Yeah, there was a really wide range to what you were. I remember kicking back to me. Yeah, you would say here's this and it would be something way way out in one direction and then you'd say and here's another idea and it'd be way way out and initially like the palette was so big we really had to you know kind of bring it down yeah and i think that really started to happen once we set upon the idea of the language and old latari and we got to the point where the choir was going to be involved right right and that and was a real turning point i think and then we had to develop sort of a language for the choir we wanted it to be kind of round and, um, you know, not like um, very, that kind of stuff, very open and yeah smooth. Yeah, we didn't want it to be like the, the Russian Tabernacle Choir. Or, <laughs> right. Or, and we didn't really want to end up in Latin either because that's, you know, yeah, that's, that's sort not of, really appropriate. Yeah, that made up Latin, at least I think it's made up that you hear in a lot of movies, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a little strange. But then you had the idea, I think, to go Hawaiian, right? Yeah, Hawaiian and Italian. We kind of we kind of took some elements of Hawaiian and some elements of Italian. And um, I remember Kevin had written 
a few passages that were coming from the Latari backstory. And he had written these things and given them to us and said, okay, here you go. Because we said we said we want something for the choir to try to experiment with these right. choir ideas. Right. Give give us some some stuff. So he gave it to us, and then we we were punching this into translators online on Google, and uh, technology to the rescue, right? Yeah. And uh, so we converted it into Hawaiian, and we converted it into Italian, and then we were taking syllables and sounds and ideas that's from right. each I one. Right. I forgot about that. And yeah. That's that's how we came up yeah. with old Latari pineapple pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember doing the uh, the foley? Yes, yes, I remember the foley sessions and the and the sound library stuff. Yeah, the fo- foley means that, um, like sometimes, well, like in a Bruce Lee movie, when he when he kicks somebody and you hear the, <laughs> you know, that's obviously not his foot. That's somebody, uh, you know, in a studio pounding a side of beef or something like that. Right. So we had to come up with sound effects um, for the game. And some sound effects we knew we could buy from libraries and stuff like that. But if if you've ever been on a project, a video project, or if you're a game developer yourself or something, and you go out to some of these libraries, you find out very quickly that they're organized according to what other people might think it sounds like or organized, mm. you know, what Tom and I like to call someone's version of a good idea. And... If, if you're not in parallel with how they're thinking, it can suddenly become very difficult to find the sound that you're looking for. Right. You have to sort of think the way they think to find it. So we ended up doing quite a few our, ourselves. A yeah. lot of like opening boxes and closing flaps and... Um, uh, yeah, trying to, make, uh, trying to make sounds of things um, <laughs> being removed or put into... Unscrewing the, the air conditioning <laughs> vent. <laughs> yes. You know, in the in the game, uh, you know, the right. vent in, in, in med lab. In you know, medical, right. That, that's Mike's air conditioning unit yes. being, being <laughs> unscrewed and banged on. Yeah. You've heard my house. So, so yeah, so we got, we got that. Um, there were some great sounds that we came across, too. Some that we didn't get to use, too. We had some sounds of, like, uh, well, I remember we opened, we drank a lot of seltzer that week. Yeah. Because yeah. we were opening seltzer bottles to get the, uh, to get the hissing escape of the, the pressurized right. uh, CO2 in there. Right. And remember that we, we bought that one sound we thought we were going to use all the time, prison bed. <laughs> <laughs> and every time, you know, should we try the prison bed? No. No. So I don't think we ever used it. We did, actually. Did we? Yeah. Oh. We we manipulated the crap out of it. You weren't here. In your defense, you weren't here. But um, there's a bit where the player, when they when they go into research, I'll say, um, you hear these sounds as you're going into research, and they're very metallic and particular oh. in this almost grinding, twisting way. Right. And those are manipulated versions of that, <laughs> that infamous prison <laughs> Finally. Sound. Yes. Okay, good. It found a home. Oh, good, good. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and uh, let's see, what else did we use? We used um- umbrellas. Yeah. We used uh, battery chargers. We used the seltzer bottles. We we tried not to get too messy because the live room here that we have at the studio is not, not exactly a uh, waterproof kind of Right, we couldn't hose it down when we were done, so yeah. we had to... There were careful. no watermelons, no sides of beef. No, <laughs> no, there was no Gallagher going on. No, no. So let's talk about the voice casting and the voiceovers on this project. There are a lot of voices and characters in the game. Yeah. So, you know, everybody's sick of hearing me talk. I'm, I'm talking in every developer chat. <laughs> so why don't, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Well, we, you know, we... When we found sort of, again, the voice for the dialogues, you know, we had to figure out, you know, who these people were going to be. Um, we had to give them dialogue that established character. And then um, also from that character, how, how are they going to deliver this? Were they going to be wise guys? Were they going to be sweet? You know, the, the, the captain had to be in charge. So we had to sort of keep that in our minds about how we thought they were going to be. And, um, and of course, one of the biggest ones was Annie. You know, how, how was she going to be? Was she going to sound really human? Was she going to sound robotic? So we went back and forth a lot on that. And we had to find actors that if they didn't fulfill what we thought they should be, they gave us something that we said, oh, I didn't think of that, but that really works. That's cool. And you, you know, you kind of think sometimes, well, somebody with a good voice um, would be would be fine. But you find out very quickly that 
as good as some people sound they just don't have it for that particular role and we we you know we'd find somebody first we listened to a bunch of well in the old days would have been tapes but <laughs> right. basically we just went out online and we listened to people's reels yeah about a thousand of them actually yeah and you know that sounds like a lot and it is but you can really tell within the first five seconds or six seconds if that person um is a contender so you know we went we went through that and then we you know we landed on a few people and then you went to the next level which was do you mind reading a little bit for us of some of our dialogue so that we can get a sense if if, if it's really going to work that's we right found, we found some great people we did there were it's funny when you when you're casting something like that um you know i've had to cast stuff for mostly for corporate projects and stuff like that not so much like a um like a real creative thing like yeah. this and certainly not our own IP before this but there were moments where somebody read something and like the first few words the one I always go to is um, Lynn McCune as as Dr. Ritessa when I heard her demo and then when she did the the test read mm -hmm. I was like that's it just that's Ritessa right. she's right there right and uh, that was the easiest cast of the of the whole thing and and you know of course you wish they're all going to be that easy that the perfect voice or character is going to come right across and and you're going to get it instantly and other times you have to work for it and we we won't talk about those but <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah you know sometimes that it's wonderful when you when you make that connection and you hear that voice it's wonderful yeah i mean stephanie riggio was great as annie jason douglas as as ren Ketterick. yeah Nailed it. He knocked it out of the park. He had come from this anime background where he was doing a lot of work doing the English versions of characters for Japanese anime that was coming over to the States from particular distributors. And so uh, I think it was Kevin had seen, had heard him mm -hmm. in something and had, had mentioned that he knew his name from these, these anime. And he said, he's got a really good voice. Check this guy out. So we checked him out and... He was a great guy. He was huge fun to work with, yep. and uh, and he was so gracious about retakes and stuff. Everybody was gracious was and great. wonderful. Uh, but then now Jason is on like The Walking Dead and stuff like that. And he's doing great. So uh, see, so if you you know if you're part of prominence, <laughs> your career just takes right off. <laughs> and so Mike and I are sitting here waiting for that effect to happen to us. <laughs> Let me know when the jet's outside. Okay, we'll do. I hope it doesn't <laughs> land on your street, man. We're gonna have problems. <laughs> so I have to say, uh, one great thing about this project, and all, despite having a big cast of voice actors, everybody was great to work with. Yeah, they were. They were. And um, you know, sometimes it's hard because with a project like this and the way we had to do it, nobody recorded here at the studio. It was all done remote. Yeah, they they each had their own setups either in their houses or studios that they went to because we were hiring talent from all over the country. So I think what we're going to do is at some point we're going to release an outtake reel from those voice sessions because there was some pretty funny stuff that happened here and in those sessions. Yeah, so, yeah. So if you've played the game, um, you'll get to hear uh, some of those characters uh, do silly things. <laughs> One of the things we realized as we were developing the music and going along with the visuals was that as the story developed we, we divided it for our purposes into acts the whole the whole game and that each act um, was requiring a different type of underscore to underscore literally the emotion of where you were in the game and also to, to push the uh, to push the story forward a little bit so we had to come up with different things and you know, our main theme, we ended up twisting around and mutating um, and sort of kind of hiding it in some of the some of the other act music so that it wasn't the same thing all the time. But yet it was like breadcrumbs. It, you know, you would go back, you could go back, trace it back to the original theme. So there was some continuity. Um, also, I, I know in the beginning I felt very strongly, and I think we kept this in a lot of the music, that there should be a pulse almost like a heartbeat that that it was a tie to an emotional feeling um, that you could have in the game a, a, a subtle sort of approach to that so it didn't become too mechanical um, 
and uh, and I think we we did that to a large extent. And in some of the some of the music cues, that heartbeat is kind of menacing, and in others it's more soothing. So it became a little bit of its own kind of uh, uh, marker, you know, uh, emotional marker in in the music. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I really, I would love to talk about that some more, but I have to stay out of spoiler territory. <laughs> so uh, maybe there'll be a time in the future where we come back and we get a chance to either do a, an in-game commentary or or something else where we pull back the curtain and talk about some of the stuff that that'd be a lot of fun went on behind the scenes because there's so much more. You know, it's like we're able to share a certain amount of depth about the decisions that we made, but there's all this area underneath that that we can't talk about. And if anybody's interested in that, that would be great. I mean, maybe we could, uh, you know, field questions if they come or something like that. But um, we're going to release a a soundtrack, right? Yeah, so speaking of the music, um, we decided at a certain point that we wanted to release the soundtrack to everyone who had bought the game right. as an extra. Right. Because we had gone around this, the ideas of, do we want to do a Kickstarter? Do we want to do a boxed version? You know, look at what was great about adventure games and how they used to come with all this great loot inside. And we wanted to try to do a little twist on that in the way that we could. As an indie developer, you only have certain avenues you can pursue. And, and we didn't want to go out there and try to try to do a Kickstarter and other things. It was it just wasn't quite the right fit for us. Uh-huh. But we were really adamant about wanting to put more value into the digital box. And one of those things is is going to be the soundtrack. It's like 40 plus minutes of music in this soundtrack. Yeah, about 16 tracks, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, a couple of bonus tracks, things that we didn't use. You can sort of get a sense of our, of our process by hearing the ones that didn't make it. Uh, that's right. Yeah, I think, there's, I think there's actually a demo in there. Yeah. Uh, one that's like just sort of like a very rough mix. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's some good stuff in the soundtrack. We're going to be releasing that very, very soon. Um, so if you've bought the game, you get to look forward to a whole album of material. So even if you hate the game, <laughs> which I don't know how you'd be listening to this if right. you hate the game, right. but even if you hate the game, uh, you got an album out of it too. There you go. And uh, another chance to like uh, some of the stuff that was put into this. Yep, yep. <laughs> So thanks for joining us for this Prominence Developer Chat. Yes. And uh, thanks to you, Tom, for coming in today and being a part of this. My pleasure. You know, hearing the music like this makes me want to talk in a certain cadence. Somewhere between Tom Baudet and Arlo Guthrie, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, if you'd like to get in touch with us, you can find almost five different ways to contact us at prominencegame.com. After this, I don't think anybody's going to want to get in touch with us. <laughs> hey, folks, we wish you a very happy holiday. And uh, thanks for listening, and we'll leave the game on for you.